So we've talked about how to calculate the dimension. I think it's interesting also to imagine this in the other direction. What if we're told the dimension and we don't know the object or the shape? What can we figure out about the, di about the shape if we only know the dimension? So here's an example. Uh, suppose we are told that the dimension of some object is log 3 over log 2, and that turns out to be about 1.58. What does that tell us? What do we know? Well, thinking about the self-similarity dimension, this would tell us that we would expect the shape to be made up of three small parts, each of which was half the size of the big part. And each of those three small parts itself would be made up of three smaller parts, which were half the size of that small part, and so on and so on. We don't know what those parts look like. We can't figure that out from the dimension. But we do know that we expect to see this um, three to two sort of as we scale in and out. And of course, this is a familiar situation from ordinary dimensions. If I tell you an object is two-dimensional, that doesn't tell you what the object looks like. You just have some sense um, that it's flat. It would live on a, on a piece of paper. All right, let's think about box counting dimension. How, what would this mean? Well, this means that suppose we, um, suppose we take s and we replace it with half s. So we have some box side. Maybe it's a quarter, maybe it's an eighth. And then we make that smaller. We, we shrink it down by a half. What would happen to the number of boxes needed to cover it? Well, that would go up by 2 to the 1.58. If it was two-dimensional, right, this goes up by two squared, four. If it's one-dimensional, it goes up by two. Here it's something that's in between. So this tells us how certain properties of the shape, in this case the number of boxes needed to cover it, change as the size of the box change. And of course we would only expect this to be um, accurate if s was already pretty small, small compared to the size of the shape. Another way of thinking about this is, if I have the shape, a certain shape, whatever the shape is, and I double it in size, it somehow grows, and whatever sort of infinite structure it has remains infinite, how much bigger, how much more massive is the, the, the new shape after it doubles up, after it scales up by 2? Well, it would be 2 to the 1.58 times. So knowing about the dimension, tells us how it scales, right? Dimension says something is sa staying the same when the scale is changed. And so this dimension, this factor, is that thing. And it tells us how, what properties, uh, how the properties change as we scale up and as we scale down. But it doesn't tell us what the shape itself um, is. So um, the dimension tells us a lot. But just like ordinary dimensions, these fractal dimensions, box counting, and self-similarity don't tell us everything. Um, in the next video, we'll go through a tour of a whole bunch of different fractals of different dimensions calculated using the self-similarity dimension or sometimes using box counting if self-similarity doesn't work. And that'll be another way to sort of think about what the dimension tells us. We'll look at shapes of all sorts of different dimensions and see how they describe shapes of different uh, sort of bumps, crinkliness, and self-similarity.